is a show that manages to cater to both children and adults. It's a fun, cute, wholesome show that really is something special. It's educational without being condescending and is also genuinely funny without it becoming annoying. It also shows how the children in the show learn and retain the lesson after each episode. I love how authentic the depiction of the children are as well. It shows little habits and phrases that both sisters clearly pick up from their parents. They watch how their parents talk eat, interact with others, and how they react to certain situations. Bluey is a show that depicts parents that know and understand this and are present in the moment. What I love about Bandit and Chili in this show is that they are parents who don't talk down to their kids or sugarcoat the big issues. They clearly take great care in what they do and say when around their kids and show how amazed and proud they are of their kids when they do learn, but they also recognise when they may have made a mistake and when they see their child imitating what they did wrong. Kids copy facial expressions, body language, and social interactions. Some habits are learned while others are inherited. In this episode of Bluey named Copycats, we see Bluey copying her dad Bandit until they come across an injured bird. Later in the episode, Bluey continues to copy her dad when he's not around, remembering how he behaved and handled the situation with the budgie. She learned about how to handle death by copying her dad's reaction. She later processed what happened by reenacting and remembering the sequence of events as well as how her dad handled each step, and then imitated what he did, while eventually coming to a basic understanding of what he may have meant by there's nothing we can do, it's out of our hands. Imitation is a distinctive behaviour. It promotes learning, a sense of belonging, and it's an essential part of growing up. In this episode, Bandit was a little annoyed with Bluey copying him and being smart enough to not copy him when he was doing something stupid. But he never discouraged her either and played along with it because he's a character who's written to know that copying is enhancing her social development. Children don't just copy their parents, but they also copy their friends, their teachers and their peers and of course characters they see on TV and movies as well as in storybooks. It's why storytelling is such an integral part of a child's development and a huge part of Bluey as a show. It sparks imagination, it stimulates their curiosity and builds the skill of reflection. Bluey is old enough now to know no, not to copy everything Bandit does because she's learned about consequences of copying everything. If this episode had Bingo instead of Bluey for instance, the episode would have been about Bingo learning about just that, the consequences of copying everything, instead of showing Bluey learning how to handle heavier themes like death. While out for a morning walk, Bluey and Bandit come across an injured bird and Bandit decides to take it to the vet where sadly the bird dies and Bluey learns about death for the first time at a very early age. The episode showed that though Bluey didn't quite understand what death was, and wasn't ready to ask the big questions yet, the episode does show that she is beginning to develop an awareness that death is a permanent thing. Learning about very abstract concepts is not something you can figure out by copying someone else, but it is how you can begin to process what's happened. What I liked about this episode was that it didn't sugarcoat the subject of death or bring theoretical or religious connotations into it. The vet doesn't say the budgie went to heaven, for instance, and Bandit didn't tell her anything similar. I like that the episode had the vet speak directly to Bluey instead of Bandit and said it straight instead of sugarcoating it. She looks her in the eye and tells her the little budgie died and Bluey went to her dad for comfort, not fully understanding what happened just yet. The episode leaves it up to Bluey herself to figure it out, instead of sugarcoating the issue. It shows her learning about irreversibility, finality, inevitability, and causality, and eventually acceptance. I also like that the episode didn't just have the two sisters just talk about the budgie dying, but instead had Bluey play out what happened with Bingo being the budgie. And I like that Bluey didn't try to teach Bingo about death either. Play is the language of childhood. Young children aren't able to vocalise their feelings in words, so their thoughts and fears will come out in unexpected ways. When Bluey wants to reenact everything that happened, she asks her mother to play with her. Chili says to her that the budgie will be fine, but Bluey tells her, actually, no, I want you to say the budgie died. Chili didn't expect Bluey to want the budgie to have died when they were playing, and instead of forcing Bluey to change the outcome of the story, Chili went along with it. 
She was fully alert to what Bluey was doing through her play, and I love that this show does that instead of just going the usual route of avoiding the subject of death entirely. The show depicts the parents being aware that this is Bluey's first encounter with death, and they don't tiptoe around the issue. They also don't make the episode too melancholy either. The balance this episode has of walking the tightrope between wholesome truth and comedic irreverence is ingenious to me. This episode is one of the best of this show and one of, if not the best cartoon I I have seen that deals with the topic of death in such a short runtime. I'm Mad Munchkin. Stay creative.